binomial theorem helps us expand things like this. Now it's called binomial because we've got two terms in the brackets here. And the power here, as you can see, is a positive integer. So no negatives, no fractions, no decimals. These uh, powers up here are always going to be positive integers. So by the end of this video, you should know how to deal with all of these three up here. This last one here is getting a little bit trickier. Okay, to understand the formula, just have a look at these expansions. If you start with a plus b to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. a plus b to the power of 1 is just a plus b. a plus b squared. You could uh, expand that out and you get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Trust me, if you go a plus b cubed, you get this thing here. You can try it if you want and check, check me out. That's what you get. And a plus b to the power of 4, you get this. Now, what I want you to see is the pattern that's going on here, uh, both with the terms and with the numbers. If you have a look at the numbers, 1's down the outside, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 you might start to recognize a pattern. In fact, those numbers, those coefficients, are just the numbers from Pascal's triangle here. And some of you may have seen Pascal's triangle before. Each number in the triangle is formed by adding the two numbers directly above it. You see how that works. 4 plus 6 is 10, 10 plus 5, 15, etc. And the triangle goes on and on and on and on and on. So that's how we get the coefficients. Now it's also good to recognize that those numbers correspond to when we uh, do choosing. 1 choose 0, 1 choose 1, 2 choose 0, 2 choose 1, 2 choose 2. So if we're looking at the, uh, I guess, the fifth row down here, which corresponds to the top number being 4, the numbers in the triangle are 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, and 4 choose 4. If you do this on your calculator using the C button, you'll see you'll get the right numbers. One. 4, 6, 4, and 1. Okay, the other pattern to recognize from up here is what's happening with the A and B terms. If I look at this row here, you can see that we start with A to the 4 in this term, then we have A cubed in this term, A squared in that term, A, and then there's no A in the last term. So the powers of A are going down by 1, the powers of B, there's no B in the first one, then there's B in this one, B squared, b cubed and then b to the power of 4. Okay, so you can see that pattern there. You'll also see that the powers in each term always add up to 4. Okay, a to the power of 1 and b cubed, 3 and 1 is 4, b to the power of 4, a squared, b squared, 2 plus 2, 4. So if you can see the pattern of what's going on, you could probably write down the next line uh, as well if you had a to the power of 5. If you knew the numbers, you could write down the next line. Now, we were given this formula. I know it looks really confusing, but this is the formula for the binomial theorem. So it's all the things that we were just saying. The numbers, the coefficients, that just come from NCR. Now, the shorthand for NCR is this thing here. So this is N choose 1 in the brackets here. No divide sign. N choose 2, N choose 3, etc., etc. You can see we start with A to the power of N. So for our example here, N was 4. And then we have a to the power of n minus 1, so we have a cubed, then a squared, then a, and then no a in the last term. Okay, so you're given that formula. It's just a matter of knowing how to use it. Here's our first example, 1 plus 2x to the power of 4. So in the formula, uh, a is 1, b is 2x, and n is 4. And we just replace those numbers in the formula very carefully, which gives me this step here. The one thing I want to emphasize is... When you have a term like this, 2x, you've got to put brackets around both the 2 and the x, okay? So these brackets here are really important. If you don't put those brackets in, for example, in this one here, you'll have 2x squared rather than 2 squared and x squared, which is 4x squared. Okay, so for working this term out, you just put 4 choose 2 on your calculator times 4x squared, and that gives you 24x squared. Okay, so there's that bracket there expanded much more quickly and much more easily than if you wrote 1 plus 2x out four times and tried to expand the brackets. So this is a much easier way of doing that. You may get questions where you're asked to write down the first three terms. Now this is 2x minus 3y to the power of 8. There's actually nine terms in this expansion. So we don't want to write all nine terms out, we just want the first three. So I'm just using the formula. 
a is 2x, b is negative 3y, make sure you get that negative in there, and n is equal to 8. So I just put it all in the formula, and that's this step right here, just writing that in the formula. Okay, and carefully evaluating it. Okay, 2 to the power of 8, x to the power of 8, 8, choose 1, 2 to the power of 7, minus 3 to the power of 1. That's the number there. So this gives me minus 3072, x to the power of 7, and y to the power of 1. Okay, and there's the third term. We do the similar thing, giving us this term here. There's the first three terms in that expansion, the first three of nine. Now, we may be asked to find a specific term in the expansion. Notice that, for example, the fourth term in the expansion is actually have a three down here. Okay, and there's a three here and a three here. The fifth term will have a four there, there, and there. So if I want the tenth term, you can see from the pattern that I'm going to have, a, have to have a 9 there, there, and there. Okay? So if we want the eighth term in this example, I'm going to want a 7 in this general term here. So this general term in the expansion, I just get from looking at maybe this third term here. I replace n, and instead of 3, I'm going to want 7. Now I've called it, as just in general, r. Okay? So we're going to, uh, in this example here, a is 3, b is x, n is 12, and I don't know what this number here is, so I've just called it r. And I've just substituted those in there. And realising the eighth term, we want r equals 7 in there. So I just do all the replacements, carefully get my calculator out, and I get that thing right there. Okay. That's the eighth term in that expansion. You definitely don't want to write this out. There'd be 13 terms in that expansion. This question is a very important one. It's getting a little bit trickier, and it's the last one here is looking more like the ones you get in the exam. We want to find the coefficient of the x cubed term. Coefficient means the number in front of. So for this first one here, there's eight terms. We do not want to write out those eight terms. That'll take a long time. We just want to find out which term is going to give us the x cubed term. So I do that using the general formula that I showed you before. So if you just look on the formula sheet, look at the one where there's threes, replace those threes with r, and that gives you the general formula. So you'd have n, c, r, now n here is 7, a to the power of n minus r, so a here is 4, n is 7, minus r, and then b, minus 3x, don't forget the minus, minus negative 3x to the power of r. There's my general term. Now I'm asking myself, what value of r will give me the x cubed term? Well, 3. If I put 3 in there, I'm going to get x cubed. So I replace r with 3, there, there, and there, and that gives me this number here. Now the question is asking for the coefficient, so I just need to quote what the number in front of the x cubed is to get the answer. a is 4 over x, b is negative 3x, same thing, I've done the exact same thing and come up with this general term here. Now, finding the value of r that gives you the x cubed term is a bit trickier here because we've got an x here and an x here. One way that you can do it is by guessing. So you can start guessing and say, well, I think r is maybe 3. And try, well, look what happens if you put 3 in there. 7 minus 3 is 4, so we'll have x to the power of 4 on the bottom, x to the power of 3 on the top. x, to power, x cubed over x to the power of 4 is not x cubed. So you can guess. Here's the algebraic method. I'm just looking at the x terms, x to the power of r on the top, x to the power of 7 minus r on the bottom. When we're dividing, we subtract the indices. So the power of x is 2r minus 7, and we want that power to be 3. So I solve a little equation here, giving me r equals 5. So I've found that r equals 5 is the right value. Substitute r equals 5 back into this original expression, and that gives me all of this. Notice that we have x to the 5 over x squared, which is x cubed, which is what we wanted. And the rest, you just carefully multiply the numbers out. The number in front of the x cubed term is negative 81,648. To find the x cubed term in this last one, we need to think about what happens when we multiply the expansion that we had from the last one by 1 minus x. So I've done that. I've written out the first four terms in this expansion. And we want the x cubed term. Well, the x cubed term we're going to get when we multiply 1 by the x cubed term. So 1 times this one here. And then 
the minus x times the x squared term. Okay, so 1 times the x cubed term, and minus x times the x squared term. When we do that, we get this x cubed minus this number of x cubed, which gives me this lot of x cubed. Right. That last one there is the trickiest one, and you have to know how to do those. Some people find those really, really tricky.